The endotoxin activity assay, EAA, is the first and only assay cleared by the US FDA and EU regulatory agencies for the measurement of endotoxin. leads to better clinical decisions. Sepsis is a deadly disease, claiming between 20 and 60 percent of patients, depending on its severity. Sepsis is a major drain on healthcare budgets and is expected to become more prevalent in the future. By providing the caregiver with reliable, time-critical information, the EAA assists physicians in stratifying patients at high risk for severe sepsis. Early identification of patients with sepsis and early intervention with goal-directed therapy provide significant benefits in patient outcome. Endotoxin is also known as lipopolysaccharide. The lipid A portion of endotoxin is the same for all gram-negative bacterial species, which is why it is the target for the EAA. There are two potential sources of endotoxin in the bloodstream, the first is infection with gram-negative bacteria. The second is endotoxin translocating across the GI tract. Endotoxemia or endotoxin in the bloodstream is a potent trigger for the pathology of sepsis. The key reagent in the EAA is an anti-endotoxin IgM antibody. When endotoxin is present in a blood sample, it is recognized and bound by the antibody and presented to the neutrophil through complement receptors. In the presence of zymosan, the patient's neutrophils undergo an enhanced respiratory burst, which is detected by luminol chemiluminescence. The amount of light emitted is proportional to the amount of endotoxin present in the blood sample. The patient sample is subdivided into three tubes to determine a patient's endotoxin activity level. Tube 1 measures the basal activity of the nonspecific oxidative burst of the patient's neutrophils in the absence of the specific anti-endotoxin antibody. It is the baseline neutrophil activity for the particular patient. Tube 3 measures the maximum oxidative burst of the patient's neutrophils in response to an excess of exogenous endotoxin. It is the maximum neutrophil activity for the particular patient. Tubes 1 and 3 act as internal controls. Tube 2 is the test measurement and measures the oxidative burst in response to the anti-endotoxin antibody. The light emissions from the three tubes are captured by the chemiluminometer, generating three data points as seen here. This instrument calculates the endotoxin activity level and reports results in endotoxin activity or EAA units. This is the essence of the EAA. To run the EAA, the following laboratory equipment is required. A chemiluminometer, such as the Berthold SmartLine TL. An incubating shaker. Combi pipetter, capable of delivering 40 microliter and 1000 microliter volumes. Pipetter, capable of delivering a 500 microliter volume. Timer. Vortex mixer. The EAA is packaged as a kit. Each EAA kit contains 20 EAA tests packaged into four foil pouch trays, two EAA reagent bottles, and directions for use. Each EAA kit contains an individually packaged QC test. After receiving the EAA kit, you may store the entire kit at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. 
Alternatively, if cold storage space in your facility is limited, refrigerate only the two EAA reagent bottles as unopened foil pouches can be stored at room temperature. The EAA is run in duplicate. Each EAA tray contains five duplicate tests. An EAA test consists of tube 1, control, tube 2, sample, and tube 3, max, all in duplicate, plus one aliquot tube for blood storage and one LPS max tube containing exogenous endotoxin. Patient blood samples should be collected in sterile blood collection tubes containing EDTA anticoagulant and stored at room temperature prior to use. Prior to starting the EAA, check product expiry date and ensure that the Berthold Smartline chemiluminometer is on and the incubating shaker is warmed to 37 degrees Celsius. Set up the EAA tubes for each patient sample in the supplied tube racks and remove the caps. Using a combi pipetter, pipette one milliliter of the EAA reagent into tubes one, two, and three in duplicate. After mixing the patient blood sample by gentle inversion, pipette 0.5 milliliter aliquots directly into the aliquot tube and the LPS max tube. Vortex the LPS Max tube. Place the rack in the incubating shaker. Close the lid and incubate for 10 minutes. Following the 10 minute incubation, remove the rack, vortex the aliquot tube, and using a sterile tip, Combi pipette 40 microliters of blood into tubes 1 and 2 in duplicate. Vortex the LPS Max tube, then using the same tip, combi pipette 40 microliters of blood into tubes 3 in duplicate. Vortex tubes 1, 2, and 3 and place them back into the rack. Place the rack back into the incubating shaker, close the lid, and start the motion set at 100 RPM and the timer set at 14 minutes. Insert the EAA labeled chip card into the chemiluminometer and press start. Following the 14 minute incubation, follow the instructions on the chemiluminometer display for reading of the EAA tubes in the proper order. Vortex each tube gently. Open the sample drawer and place tube one in the sample holder. Close the sample drawer and wait for an RLU reading. Repeat for tube two. Then tube three. Repeat this process for the duplicate test. After all tubes are read, the EAA results are calculated and printed automatically. For any remaining tests, 
Insert the tray back into the foil pouch, reseal and store at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for up to 30 days. The EAA measures endotoxin in patient blood. The test is cleared by the US FDA and EU regulatory agencies for the assessment of the risk of severe sepsis and is EU cleared to rule out gram-negative infections. The results of the EAA test are reported in EAA units. Less than 0.40 EAA units, low endotoxin activity level, represents a low risk for progression to severe sepsis and rules out gram-negative infections. 0.40 to 0.59 EAA units, intermediate endotoxin activity level, represents an elevated risk for severe sepsis. Greater than or equal to 0.60 EAA units, high endotoxin activity level, represents a high risk for developing severe sepsis. The EAA is intended to help assess a patient's risk of severe sepsis during the first critical hours following admission to a critical care area. Test results are most useful when considered in the context of the patient's overall clinical condition. Patients with high endotoxin activity levels on the first day of admission to a critical care area are three times more likely to develop severe sepsis within the next 24 hours than subjects whose EAA values are low. The EAA is not intended for the differential diagnosis of a current sepsis condition. Precise diagnosis of primary and secondary causes of endotoxemia requires further clinical and diagnostic approaches to determine its exact causes and appropriate therapies. The use of a whole blood chemiluminescence test that utilizes each patient as their own control is simple, sensitive, and more accurately represents true blood levels of endotoxin. By providing the caregiver with reliable, time-critical information, the EAA allows clinicians to rapidly determine endotoxemia levels and can assist in stratifying patients at high risk for severe sepsis. The late sequelae of sepsis, including multi-organ failure and death, may be prevented through early intervention. The EAA is the only assay FDA cleared for the measurement of endotoxin in the bloodstream and represents a significant step forward in the measurement of this complex analyte. Make the diagnosis. Make the difference.